Welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited to bring you guys these coasters. I call them my rock star party coasters a little while ago on Instagram when I was still working on these. And I've had the footage ready to go for a while. As some of you know, I was out of town for my birthday and I want to get right into it and show you how I made these beauties. Before we get into the video, I ask that you please like, comment, and subscribe. It's totally free for you. It really helps me out and I have so much free content for you guys to check out so I just think these are really really cool and um, they're very different for me they turned out very different than anything I've ever done before and I just I think both sides of them are really cool and kind of have their own interesting elements to them um, and these were made with everything from my store dryerdaysartstudio.com so let's get right into it so I had these molds custom made so you can only get these molds in my store and I'm going to start off with some total boats resin. I'm using their countertop epoxy. I do like to use countertop epoxy when I'm making coasters or trays, anything that's going to be functional art that's going to get some use uh, because the countertop epoxy, I think just tends to be a little bit more durable, it has a little bit more heat resistancy. And so I'm just doing a clear thin layer to start off all of these. And you can see all the colors we're gonna use. We're gonna use mauve. Yes, I know I spelled it wrong. I sort of did it on purpose because no one ever spells my name right. And I have been kind of waiting to pick a color to do the, the name a little bit off. I don't know why I did it because of course everyone's like, did you mean to do it? Yeah, I, I did. Yes, sort of in a roundabout way, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's mauve and it's a beautiful color. We're gonna use some antique gold small stones. Those are sold out right now in my store, but I do have gold cuttings and some other similar stones similar to it. I will link everything in the video description. We're also gonna use some deep gold shimmer. We're gonna use the white pigment paste and we're gonna use some birthday cake round glitter, which is so awesome and some of my favorites. Sorry, I didn't notice what was going on on my table here before I started filming. I got a little bracelet over there that my daughter made for me. I got some butterfly stickers, so we just kind of have a lot going on, but that's okay. I'm going to start with the antique gold stones. I have them in a little Dixie cup and I'm pinching the cup to give us a little spout there so that the stones will come out slowly. And I'm gonna do that in the center of each mold. Next day, I'm gonna take that mauve and mix a little bit into some pre-mixed resin. Look at how beautiful this color is. It's beautiful. Next, we're gonna take some deep gold shimmer. This stuff is beautiful there oh yeah i also was considering using some of my brilliance pigment that is brand new uh, to my store i haven't gotten a chance to use it yet but that would have been gorgeous in this as well i will um, link brilliance down below if you guys want to check that out too it's also just in with my other pigments in my store and next i'm going to mix up some birthday cake for you guys we're going to get this ready and i'm going to set it to the side because i want to add a little bit of the mauve in doing another circle around here and you'll see too when I add in the white, the white paste is so heavy that as you might have noticed in the beginning, it really sunk down and kind of surpassed all of the other colors, all this mauve, all this gold. Um, we still got some beautiful flecks of it throughout, but you may notice that at the end uh, when you see the finished product, the white paste is very heavy. It's very pigmented. And here comes the birthday cake. I knew I wanted this around the outside edge to really give us some beautiful sparkle. So keeping it nice and tight against that outer rim there. This glitter is so beautiful, I love it. I love its sister glitter too, Best Friend, which is more blues and golds. I love that they're circular shaped, they give a little bit of a different look and my girls help me name them. <laughs> I was just commenting in another video that it's really hard for me to pick out names for the glitter and sometimes I ask you guys for help and this time my daughters help me name these. And here we come with the white paste. See how beautiful and opaque it is. This gets beautiful cells, beautiful lacing when using in an ocean pour or something similar. 
and just laying a little bit in. You only need a little and you will see how it takes over. <laughs> and then layering on top of it, even some of the pigmented resins to see if that will uh, give us a few different effects here. And just going around here to fill out the outside edge a little bit better, I did want it to be pretty heavy with that birthday cake glitter. And as you can see on the side, it's kind of already starting to spread and get on the surface of the piece, uh, which I hadn't really done. I had it mixed with resin, so it wasn't like it was loose glitter. I was hitting this periodically with my heat gun. So as you can see, some of those pigments have moved and kind of melded together, uh, but it should not have been blowing my glitter around since that glitter was already in the resin. Um, but I actually really like the effects it gives after these have cured where the little round um, flecks of glitter kind of randomly on the surface. And again, you'll kind of see that at the end. Okay, so it's been about 48 hours. I'm gonna demold these. These are a little bit deeper than the ones you're gonna get. These were um, my, the ones that I got as sort of um, testers to see if I liked the shape. So mine are a little bit deeper than the ones that you guys get. But they are still exceptionally durable, reusable, easy to clean, very smooth, no imperfections. So I was digging these, they definitely look different than my normal coasters. You can see how that white really sunk, but we got some pretty awesome cells with them here. Um, I don't normally add lines to my coasters. Oh, this is my daughter. She wanted to demold one. Now these have been cured for 48 hours, so I felt it was safe for her to demold. I did go and grab her some gloves, but she didn't want to listen. Um, but anyway, I don't normally add lines to my coasters, but I felt like these kind of needed something and so that's what I did. I just took a gold marker as you can see here and I added some lines. I added some to the back side as well. Those green ones I'm going to be doing a video on that will be coming soon um, but I did do a flood coat on these. There I kind of wiped them down a little bit that's why they had a little bit of residue. Yeah so these will be coming in another video probably next week or the week after because I have to do a video for the upcoming July box. So the new July box will be coming. Thank you so much guys for the June box selling out. I may actually have one June box left because one was a return to sender. The address was wrong and I'm trying to reach the woman who bought it and she's not responding. So one June box may be going back in the store. Okay, so I just took a dry cloth and wiped that out. Remember how that was just so smeared earlier? In the, I just wiped it out and we are good to go. I'm taking some Elmer's school glue. We're gonna do a thick glob here and we're just gonna lay it all in the inside. This is the bottom underside and this is gonna protect us from any drips. I do this in some other videos at length. I actually have a flood coat video. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll link it here. So I'm not gonna to go too in depth about this, but I'm gonna go around on all of these, putting in the glue, and then once that dries, we'll be ready for the flood coat.
I have let that flood coat cure for about 48 hours. I like to make sure it's fully cured so I'm not gonna get any impressions in it at all, but I don't like the glue to sit too long. So you can see since I did a nice thick coat of that glue, it's peeling right off. It's so satisfying peeling that off. Look at that, comes off perfectly. Caught any of our drips, beautiful. Look at this thing sparkling with its flood coat. I opted not to finish the sides. Okay, here, sorry. These are those other green ones that you guys are gonna see in another video, but I opted not to do the sides of the Rockstar coasters because I love that you can see the glitter kind of coming through on the edges. We'll just show this again because it is so satisfying. <laughs> so again, that is our glue that I was laying down underneath to catch any drips. Came off perfectly, beautiful flood coat. Those came out really neat too and I can't wait to show you their video so keep an eye out for those. All right, everybody. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video and how I made these awesome coasters. Let me know what you think in the comments. Head over to dryerdaysartstudio.com to get all of the products used in this video. Everything is also linked below in the description. Come check me out on TikTok and Instagram at Dryer Days. I appreciate you guys so much. Again, please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time keep on pouring.